Hello, Todd Bog here with Breaking the Stream, and welcome to a new Let's Play of Age of Wonders 4. I know we've been a little absent on the recorded videos, a lot of life getting in the way, but uh, we've been excited for this game for some time. Uh, we're already doing a live stream as we speak, uh, as soon as possible for the launch, and we'll be doing one uh, later in the day uh, as a multiplayer as well, uh, during our normal stream time. But I wanted to get a series together as a video series for those of you who prefer the non-streamed type content so we can kind of go over in more depth and detail and kind of work through uh, how the game plays and, and just kind of get an idea for it. And the idea is you can drop any questions, comments, or anything into the videos and get those answered as we go or we can explore them if there's something you'd like us to try. So, uh, so what we have here is the Age of Wonders 4 game. Uh, we've got uh, the ability, I, I created a character to test it out, kind of run through uh, some of the character creation stuff. So I'll kind of walk you through what we did, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and hit new game. Choose your destination. So for those of you not familiar, um, this doesn't have a story mode like all the previous Age of Wonder games. Instead, it's all done through uh, just, you know, your, your uh, random games here. But uh, the games themselves give you, like it says Story Realm 1. Uh, so there uh, might be related to the realms themselves here and you can see that there's different versions of the realms If you go over the realms, you can see what they do uh, So this one has uh, more mana nodes ancient ruins and uninhabitable underground. So there's no uh, underground uh, Really into that world. So uh, this is probably what I'm gonna play as first just to get us through and uh, started here um, so you basically will be able to go through and and play um, so so we're clashing with the returning wizard kings and rise in power. So we're going to go ahead and select that. Do, do, do. Okay, we're going to select that. There we go. Uh, we're going to go on the normal difficulty. And again, this will bring you up all your traits here. So uh, if you are unsure or you're a more visual person, you can use this to, to figure out what's going on here. So we'll do the normal difficulty. And then this is where you can create your character. So they're going to do a uh, bunch of tutorial stuff pop up. Um, you can create a new faction, new race and ruler, uh, or you can just click custom and create faction there. So uh, you can do a variety of things. So I'll, I'll show you what I made here. And what we'll do is we'll probably do, uh, we may stick with this, uh, we'll see. Uh, but we'll go through the character creation, kind of show it off real quick. But as you can see, uh, I made a, a horde, a halfling horde. I wanted, you know, armies uh, or just, you know, tons of halflings to band together and fight uh, under their feudal lords. So. Uh, so uh, you make a few choices and we'll go through that in the character creation. You got Tome of the Horde, so we'll get uh, access to abilities that make us better as Horde units. Um, we've got w Wolf Mounts, just because we can, um, but it, more importantly it gives the Pack Hunter uh, for wolf, hunt, uh, wolf units, so you'll get uh, extra damage for being near each other. Overwhelm Tactics increases your critical chance when standing next to friendly units. Um, and then uh, Prolific Swarmers from our Feudal Choice. Um, or uh, from our other choice gives us uh, you know less upkeep so we can have a swarm of level one units and then we have the uh, let's see 20% income where was it oh yeah shield units pull arm units have plus one rank and then feudal itself gives us stand together which gives plus 20% damage so so we're doing everything as uh, intended as a group we're gonna stick together we're gonna do some damage and then my lord himself had a staff of spirit so he could support our our group from behind you know causing blind and all the number of things so so this is kind of what we created but we're gonna go ahead and create a faction here and let's change it up a little bit here um, why don't we make ourselves some magical people here all right uh, I'm gonna go ahead uh, Molkin feline toadkin uh, I kind of want to do toadkin all right, let's do Toadkin, why don't we? So so they give you default traits here. So you can see here, plus three to status resistance, uh, water adaptation. So swamp terrain cost minus two move and able to build farms on swamp terrain. Um, so I don't want those. I want to go ahead and choose our own thing. So we want to be like magical people. So we got to take a look at what we want to do to make that happen. Um, physical and range attacks. Keen sighted is always a good one. Uh, extra defense and resistance is a good one too. Um, fast recuperation will let you uh, get back into combat quicker after taking damage. And then, uh, you know, we can take a look. I wonder why Bulwark. Oh, defense mode grants it. Okay, never mind. So, yeah, you got resolute, which gives. or resistant, which gives you plus two resistance. Resolute. 
uh, strong. So you've got a number of different choices here. Uh, tough might not be a bad one for us, uh, just so we can last a little longer. So let's go ahead and do that. And instead of water adaptation, uh, as you can see, there's a variety of different choices here. Could do arcane focus. I think that may not be a bad idea. Yeah, let's do that. I want to kind of show off some of the things. Now let's think about this. Uh, unicorn mounts get phase. Spider mounts get web. Um, yeah, no, tough is fine. So, all right. So we'll be a tough, arcane-focused uh, frog people. So what is that origin? Culture? Now you've got your culture. So you can choose a variety of different cultures. You saw what Feudal did. Uh, so they get the stand together. Um, and the tooltips are beautiful in this. I love it. Um, grant five hero special feudal lord titles as hero skills get food income you got high which give you uh, gold income and affinity uh, so all of these will have these affinities you'll see order affinity nature affinity and those will be used in the empire screen we'll go over that in more detail soon but uh, I think we're gonna probably go mystic right so astral affinity uh, governor modifies mana income by plus two per point so this way we can lean into the extra magic that this world presents. So we'll do Mystic. What defines and then these society? are traits. So these are for your society. So uh, as you can see, we have Ancient eyes one, uh, Wise Ones, which is pretty good because basically uh, when you have that, the Tome, which is how you unlock magic and research, gives you a 60% discount on a random skill in that Tome. Uh, and you start with one random research skill already unlocked. So. Kind of a nice little start and then a nice boost every time you research a new tome. Uh, Gifted Casters, of course, gives you access to more combat casting and world casting points. And spells cost less. And Mana Chandlers, uh, summoning spells cost 50% less mana to cast. And uh, they have plus one rank. So that's a tough one. I really like the Ancient Wise ones. Let's do that and we'll do... Yeah, so you can't do that with uh, Gifted Casters. So you either have Ancient Eyes ones or, uh, and they'll tell you it's incompatible. So yeah, that makes it a little easier. So we'll do Mana Channelers, because uh, I do want to use Summoned Units. That's kind of the idea here, so. Choose your first All right, tone. and then this is the last kind of choice you make, uh, other than some of your character-related ones. So this one will unlock certain abilities. So grant excellent and cheap attack spells uh, for the Tome of Evocation, and it gives you access to more affinity, as you can see, too. Channeling Tower, which gives more mana. Uh, Lightning Weapons, which is a, a buff you can get for your people. Uh, stuff like that. And then you can see the different spells. And as you can see, this is a Tier 1. Uh, it goes up to Tier 5, but you just select the Tier 1 as one of your base units here. So, so that's kind of what you do there. So, alright. Give me just a sec. I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Just a small uh, interruption here, but all, all good. But yeah, so we're taking a look at our different things. You can see uh, attack spells, and if you hover over, you'll see what it does. So lightning focus means um, you know you get additional lightning damage when you're attacking and a chance to electrify. Um, so these are kind of neat because they have the buffs, but you also then get uh, like a summon spell. So you can summon a lesser storm spirit. These guys are pretty interesting. Um, but then you also have the evoker, a battle mage. Um, so you'll get access to this unit that'll shoot lightning bolt and have the electrifying arc ability. And if you hover over, you'll see this. This represents that they'll attack as many times as they're able, up to three times typically. Electrifying arc means it uses their entire move, but they'll be able to cast that. So, um, and then sometimes, like, uh, we'll just kind of go over to the Tome of the Horde. You can see that, you know, you'll get some units just like in the others. But you also might get things like this, which is a minor race transformation. Uh, so your, your, your race can be transformed. So in this particular case, this one makes them smaller. So they become smaller, more numerous, granting an increased number of units in formation, plus 20% damage. So essentially, you're going to be able to put more people in the same little hex. So we'll see what that means later and everything. But, but yeah, as you can see, the, the choice of tome can really change up how you play. And you're allowed, I believe it's two minor and one major transformation. So you're going to just see minor transformations through these. But um, you can see uh, all the different focuses here. Tome of Enchantment, which will be about buffing. Um, and you get a Copper Golem, uh, which is a pretty nice little guy. Um, yeah, it's actually really nice. Three defense is pretty good on a tier one unit, for instance. You can see the Gargoyle here has three defense as well. Uh, 
So Tome of Rock, Tome of Roots, Tome of Beasts. So this is where you'll get animal kinship and things like that for druids, including Wild Speaker, a support unit that powers your animals and things like that. So, so Tome of Faith, that's one I definitely want to take a look at. Tome of Zeal, uh, not for this playthrough, but for future playthroughs for sure. So, uh, and maybe I'll I'll play that during the stream. Um, you'll see later. So, um, so we got Tome of Souls. That's for like almost like necromancy cryomancy makes sense so i want a summoning type one so what do we got for that tome of beasts of course but tome of zeal nope tome of souls let's see tome of cryomancy gets lesser snow spirits blizzard um so that this is a world spell i believe so enemy army spell yep you cast it on the world map and they'll take 20 frost damage and suffer a status uh, minus two to their status resistance uh, for two t uh, for a turn, so could be useful. Oh, and uh, yeah, we got to take a look at the school of cryomancy gives knowledge and mana for adjacent snow or ice provinces uh, when you get the school of cryomancy, and then the frost weapons. So hmm. other option is go with lightning. Lightning's always good. Or warding. Warding does get phantasm warriors, which are highly defensive, as you can see, with four. And we'll kind of go over what that means here. So, um, yeah, let's let's go back to the uh, lightning. Let's go ahead and do that. That looks like fun. Did these change their organization? Tome of warding, evocation. There we go. Because the lesser sp storm spirits and evokers should be pretty nice. So we'll go ahead and select this. What is your ruler's origin? All right, so your origin, normally you get a couple options, but I think because this is a, uh, because of the world that we're in, you only get to choose champion. The other option would be a caster king, uh, a wizard king. And the wizard king is kind of neat because it doesn't have to match your race. Um, you can be basically the liberator or enslaver of a race, that kind of thing as an example. Uh, in this case, we're going to be a champion, so we just get uh, extra gold income and stability. Uh, Non-hero units get uh, more experience, and we start with relationships with free cities. So we'll do this for for this Reveal gameplay. Yourself. And then this is where we actually design ourselves. So uh, as other people have mentioned, there's a few things you can change. So uh, I think blue, white, you can choose uh, different icons to match what you think. But I think blue, white with a dragon is pretty cool. So we're going to go ahead and, and keep that. Uh, but your uh, ability here, so you can go with uh, different weapons. So, and they, they'll start with like a mystic mace and it changes up what you do. Also gives you uh, access to, uh, you know, a, a benefit here. So that one's bigger uh, if you do the mace and shield. Bladed mace is basically a two-handed thing. Gives you access to fighting. So, and then you got a lightning staff, which will then give you access to restore. So you can uh, heal. Um, and then finally the lightning orb. So this one lets you get uh, Magecraft 1, um, so you get more accuracy with your... You're basically an offensive uh, uh, shooter, uh, offensive magic user, so... Uh, and you get your Magic Bolts. I think you get the same Magic Bolts. No, you get the Staff of Lightning, Magic Blast. So that's a single target attack, as you can see. It does more damage, but it only attacks once. Whereas the Lightning Orb attacks multiple times with that 10 magic damage so um hmm. so the question is do i want to heal or do i want to reduce status ailments i think we're going to go with the healing so that'll be the lightning staff okay yeah we'll get the restore restoration we'll get a single shock attack um, but this way i can keep my armies going and i plan on on leading armies for sure with my guy so, uh, as you can see, we can do all sorts of changes for the body types and stuff. Uh, there's male and female, so uh, we'll go with a male kind of figure, physique. Uh, we'll go ahead and make ourselves chubby. And we want, we can have tiny arms, and as you can see, it affects all sorts of stuff here. So let's go with uh, super long arms, you know, we got to use it to push off. You can go super long legs, be tall or short. Uh, yeah, we'll go with tall. Um, I'm okay with green. Yeah, we'll keep that. You can change your pose. This one's pretty good. Um, as you can see, all the different poses there. Uh, I like having my staff. Uh, for my head, 
you can't see it right now so we got to change the outfit the helmet let's see I think that works all right now we can change my head here uh, <laughs> I don't know if I like the teeth uh, let's give myself a big old uh, thing there so eye color yeah that that's creepy enough um, I don't think we need Oh, we got different mohawks, huh? Interesting. Ooh. Some of these are cool. Oh, let's just go with this one here. I like that. Eyebrows. Yeah, that's fine. Not looking to get too crazy here. Uh, armor color, we could go ahead and go with uh, red. I don't know if that changed anything, but um, we'll keep that. All right, so we got everything set up here. We've got... Outfit, that's the only thing I haven't looked at. Outfit and cape, so we'll take a look. So, that's kind of cool. I like the armor look. Alright, let's do that. Okay, that's where the armor color comes in. We go with black. Yeah, that's kind of plain. Let's go with white. Yeah, that looks okay. Very metallic. And then cape. So, we got this fur cloak. I want something a little more clothy. Yeah, that looks good. All right. So, we've created our character. Uh, let's see. We can hit the randomize button if you're not worried about it. So, we're going to go ahead and call ourselves the Emperor. And no, we'll call ourselves the Grand Seer. Uh, Rapido Fate Weaver. Uh, I kind of actually like that. <laughs> Um, so we'll go ahead and keep that. Um, we can change our race name. So we'll be good. Uh, the Arcane Toadies. There you go. Uh, and yeah, you can lock these if you want to randomize. Like if you like your last name and first name, you can then just uh, lock these in. Um, or last, and then, you know, roll for the other parts and everything like that. So, so glory to Grand Seer Rapido Fate Weaver, champion of our kind. He will bring a new age of prosperity to the Arcane Toadies. Uh, so it basically gives you a little description and we go onward. So rise it of the Gondir. It was the time when the raw forces of magic returned to Athla. The seal that had protected the world was shattered. The cosmic currents thereby unleashed shaped the land. Changing what was whilst returning what once may have been. In the wake of this new genesis, the great empires of the Third Age fell into decline, bringing on an era of re-exploration and expansion. All right. Alas, the time for peaceful discovery was brief, for the ancient wizards of the Second Age broke free from their eldritch prisons in the depths of the Astral Sea. Their strength regained, they set out to rule over the surviving peoples as god kings, or godia. There was little divine about them. Yaka, Nimue, Carissa, a pantheon of pretender gods. They were scarred, corrupted, haunted by millennia of torment, and ready to unleash their newfound powers against whoever dared stand in their way. So it does look like this is actually story-based because these are the uh, other lords that I ran into when I was just doing my test. So looks like this is actually related to a story, so that's good to know. Yet the wizard kings were not unchallenged. Mortal champions rose to the defense of their people, rebuilding their realms and learning to channel the currents of magic. This is the story of one such champion. While traveling through the Valley of Wonders in search of a new home, tragedy befell his tribe, its elder slain by a magical being. After inheriting both the elder's throne and his powerful tome of magic, the young champion had to rise up and protect his people from the dangers that awaited. Awesome. So this should bring us to the world. Nice little spin around. 
and this will actually have quests uh, related to activities it recommends. So, Rapido Fate Weaver. A new ruler emerges. Explore your surroundings and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. You will, ch your choices will shape the new age of wonder. So we have the Tome of Evocation. It shows all of our choices here, and you can hover over it if you don't remember. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. So our starting magic, uh, we can get Fulmination, which is just a nice damage spell, uh, and it affects in a one hex radius. Cosmic Ablation is a just nice three channel uh, attack. And then Lightning Blades. Um, so this one's pretty nice too. Uh, it does reduce physical damage, but increase lightning damage. So depending on what you're fighting, if you have a lot of physical resistance, heavily armored guys, uh, this is definitely gonna help. So uh, of the three though, let's see, that one costs, just thinking. This one seems pretty nice, Cosmic Ablation. Um, but the Electrified's pretty nice. Uh, it suffers eight lightning damage each turn. So we'll go with Fulmination. All right, New Dawn, Battle Quest. Uh, long have the arcane toadies wondered Athla as exiles. O Grand Seer, Rapido Fate Weaver. By leading them to this valley, you've returned them to their hope. The proud city of Crystallios represents a new beginning for your people. They are eager to stride beyond the city gates and claim the surrounding land as their own. To expand your domain, hunt down the creatures near Crystallios and grow population to place your first farm. So it's got some things to, to kind of guide you through. So we'll go through this and, and kind of go through their their little journey here. And you can see it'll tell you what you'll get for your rewards. So. Um, so this is your interface here. So we've got this quest marker. So this is the uh, units we got to kill. We've got to kill ourselves a river troll, uh, a Grimbeak crow, and an inferno puppy. You have selected Aww. a unit and opened the unit panel. Yeah. So we're gonna hear the occasional tutorials, I guess. As well as so. Any weaknesses you could exploit. Just hit that. But as you can see, we can take a look at it. We can see all the different abilities. Uh, one thing to note, unlike uh, previous, if you played any of the previous Age of Wonders, uh, you don't start with any defense or resistance. It's not like the old system. Uh, but each point will give you 10% of the damage. And then the next one will give you 10% of what your existing uh, resistance is. So start with 10%. If you go to defense 2, it'll be 19%, so on and so forth. Same for resistance, um, and it'll break it down. Um, depending on what you are. So if you have some abilities, as you can see here, fire resistance is added. So your base resistance plus fire resistance means you're reducing it by 27%, uh, but you're taking additional damage from the other two channels. So. so you can see all the abilities, there are abilities here. So melee strikes about fire damage, so on and so forth, um, low maintenance. So pretty cool. And you can see the river troll is a tier three. So he's a little bit meaner. He attacks at 15 damage. He has a base defense 3. Um, I'm sure he has natural regen. Yep. Um, and then they do a thing called temporary hit points, which is kind of a nice balancing thing. We'll kind of go over that in more detail in just a bit. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and start scouting, and we'll cover some more things in just a bit here. All right. So we've got Rapido's scout unit. It's a mystic projection. Uh, not intended to fight, but they do some damage here, so... Uh, we'll go ahead and move them out. And then our core unit here. Uh, let's see what we end up with. We got ourselves, of course. We got a Soother, which is the support unit. Uh, they do a Cosmic Blast. Soothing Breeze, so they do healing. Um, so not bad at all. And then we've got ourselves an Arcane Guard, a Polearm unit. Uh, nice melee strike there. It's a multiple for 12 damage each. Same with the Lesser Tide Spirit, but this one, I believe, yeah, that's uh, inflicts wet, uh, which will make them even more susceptible to lightning. And then a couple battle mages firing off their cosmic bolts. So, so pretty nice little mage army here uh, to start with. And your army depends on what you choose as your uh, your kind of your government. So feudal will have different units than your mages. So, all right, so we'll go here. As you can see, it's got this here. Um, so what we're going to do for combat is, for the most part, we're going to try and use auto combat. Um, so what we could do is we'll hit that. It'll show you the result. And as you can see, we took some damage. But uh, for this one, we can watch the replay. And you know, I'll let you guys decide as these videos come out if you want to see more battles or if you want me to start fighting more in the tactical. 
Uh, but just in the interest of, you know, seeing the gameplay and everything like this, at least early on, we'll kind of show off what happened here. So, as you can see, they're moving up, they're doing some buffs. Um, and, yep. So, that's our pikemen getting up there and doing their thing. All the other people have uh, uh, basically casting, so they're just going to be shooting things. So... Boom! Oh, only grazed him, so. So. But yeah, you can see the damage that they're doing, and it shows the damage channels. So, um, obviously, he's resisting with his resistance. Oh, through a net. That's why they took so much damage. So. Alright. Let's see what happens. The birds are going to attack. Yeah. So we're. Resisted the blindness, which is nice. But yeah, we're just taking some damage. That's what happens when you charge up with your melee unit. So I would have done it a little differently. What's nice about the auto combat, though, is that if you did not like the result, you can actually replay it. So uh, if you do a combat and you're like, well, why did I lose my hero? That's kind of stupid. You can actually go through and redo this uh, combat instead. So. And as you can see, we're attacking multiple times. It all depends on our action points. So those guys had two action points, so they're going to shoot twice. These guys have one action point left. So, And then you see it's only temporary hit points. So they're going to be able to lose those now, but they're going to still have the damage left over uh, to, to balance it. Because healing uh, was always a little more powerful, especially on the world map, because the enemy uh, or those that can heal uh, have units that can get into combat much for much longer periods of time before they have to wait and relax. So, so showing flanking and stuff like that. So, but Yeah, so that's what happened there. So we wiped them out. We uh, accomplished our quest. And it uh, will give us a bonus once we finish the building of a farm, uh, which we'll be able to do in, a, in about a turn. So. so we still have some movement points left. Uh, at this point, should probably go and just acquire some resources here. So we'll just get over here so we can start attacking uh, these two, three items over here. So, All right. Arcane research. Hmm. Magic shield. Gives you defense. Scroll of Entombment, uh, Starblade. So what's neat about this is it'll show you uh, Grant's non-mystic units, uh, the Entombment of Starblades, which gives you plus one to uh, three damage channels for three turns. And it'll show you units in your army that can actually be affected by that right now. And right now we only have the Lesser Tide Spirit, so um, that would be affected by that. So all units suffer 20 lightning damage. All units suffer minus two. That's the Lightning Torment. Uh, right now, I don't like any of these that much, so we'll go for the lesser one. You can also re-roll it for a cost of mana, but let's not waste our stuff now. Alright, Evocator is a book. So now we're building in our city, and you've got two different queues, which is a nice change uh, from Age of Wonders 3, in that you can build units separately from buildings, so you can always be building on both of them, so long as you have the resources. So uh, Let's see, we're going to be building a farm soon, so... Why don't we work on a storehouse in the interim? Uh, we can hurry production if we want to, and it only costs you gold. Doesn't cost you any uh, happiness, which the other ones did. So, so we got that. And then for the units, I could produce one here. Let's see. Do I have that as a quest right now? No. We'll wait. Because it's going to be a quest, I know, for building a scout, I believe. So. Mending the Schism, Befriend City Quest. So they want a pact of vassalage with Weird Gate. Following up the long debate, one of the soothers from Crystallios approaches you, eager to speak. As you know, my grands here, not all of us arcane toadies had the wisdom to follow your lead to Crystallios. Some believe became fearful of the magic the elders passed on to you in our grands here. They stayed with Bogart Quill to found Weird Gate on their own. Will you seek out an ally Weird Gate to reunite? So I got a few choices here, so I'm not stuck with befriending them, I agree. I shall secure the loyalty with the sword, so you'll become a little more evil. Uh, you'll receive extra draft, which uh, will be utilized um, for building. It's Think of it as your, your, your production points for units. So you pay gold to build them and then production points to actually uh, construct them. 
and then relationships will be reduced or you can decline the quest. So I'll agree to be friendly. Um, that's typically my, my way until uh, pushed, right? So, so as you can see, we, we didn't heal that much. Uh, so if we go into another fight, we risk our, our pole arm unit. Um, but I have a feeling we'll be okay. So we'll go ahead and attack. So as you can see, we were running into two lesser stone spirits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit auto combat and we'll see if we lose our unit. We did not, so we were smart about it. Took some damage against our Arcanus because these guys uh, probably got into range, but overall we did pretty well. So, um, oh, and we actually included our Mystic Projection there. So, all right. Uh, no really reason to watch that. That's a pretty simple fight there. Um, so let's go down here. This one should be a fairly easy one too. Got ourselves a Gortus Piglet and an Entwined Thrall. So you can see the type of unit here and uh, they'll tell you some of the things they get. Swift and slippery. Norse train effects, doesn't trigger opportunity attacks. This is a shock unit. So uh, as a charge attack, which is a single attack, but does more damage if you travel further. So kind of like, you know, running into combat and counter shield units. So, so there's a little uh, rock, paper, scissors going on, but all right. So we also included our friend there too. As you can see, we're a little beat up, but we did gain some ranking. So uh, we're now at the uh, veteran rank here. So very nice. So we'll hit close. All right. So we kind of want to get that one next, but we'll worry about that in just a sec. Now, one of the things you can do is you've earned this Imperium, and you can use this to attract population, uh, which instantly increases your population. So I could do that now. It would be two turns otherwise, so let's do that. And this population point then allows me to settle in one of the regions nearby. So let's see. We've got pastures here, so that might not be a bad idea. So as you can see, you have different options. So you've got your farm, which gives you five food. Uh, Forester gives you two food, three production, five production from the quarry. Uh, and then the mine here will give you five gold. So it all depends on what you have. Fish in the water, as you can see. Um, you have to have forest for the uh, forestry. So uh, in this case, though, we need to build a farm for our thing anyways. And so pasture there will mean we'll grow faster. So and uh, this is the aftermath of the quest. So a new dawn aftermath. You've tamed the lands around Crystallios and invoked a spirit of optimism and adventure in your people. They're staging a play that retells the story of how you led the arcane toadies to safety. From the death of the Elder to the inherited tome, the schism with Bogart Quill, and eventually the founding of Crystallios in the Valley of Wonders. Excuse me. This play in your honor will conclude with a promise for the future. How do you wish it to end? And for six turns, uh, you're going to get the 32 stability per turn. And then you can get gold per turn. You can get straight up gold or food which will get you a population which is probably not a bad idea um, receive draft to allow you to build a unit right away um, or receive knowledge per turn so um, I'm gonna go with the food I like the idea of a new population right away um, so that allows us to expand as needed um, let's see which way do we want to go get gold that's got a gold vein this has got an iron deposit that's actually pretty useful too yeah, let's do that. I've, I've cleared out the iron node there, so um, so you got to click the city, and then you just got to click. Hmm, which one do we want? Gold is not a bad idea. More production isn't a bad idea either. Let's do the production. So we'll have a quarry. Uh, important to note. Um, I think I mentioned it, but if I didn't. Uh, as you can see now, this is boosted, and you boost by building. Uh, are by having this at the bottom here. Or forester for that. The granaries are boosted by building two foresters. Um, as you can see, the Evocator abode is built, uh, are boosted by one farm. Um, and what this does is reduce the cost and the turns it takes to build it. So everything was seven turns originally. Now you can see that it's been affected a little bit here uh, by the boosts and everything. So quarry, farm, and then as you can see, the town hall is boosted by having five populations. So. So it's definitely important, and obviously I'm nowhere near uh, figuring out what I need to uh, to make the most optimal choices here, but we'll figure it out. So um, right now, what do I want more? 
as a tier one unit. Let's go ahead and build ourselves an arcane guard. Just because uh, it looks like they're going to get beat up. Orders required. So this is my scout. So we'll have them kind of roam around and see what they can find. All right. Rulers leveled up. So now when I choose my level ups, I can basically go over here and choose from a variety of different options. At level 5, I'll be able to unlock signature skills, uh, 5, 10, 15, and 20. And you can see I have one skill right now, and you basically select it. So you can choose from different categories. If you hover, you'll see that uh, in order to get Sentinel, I need two more warfare skills unlocked. So some of them are locked for now. Um, and then you can just choose based on what you have as far as your concept. So. So right now I've got a Magic Blast, but I'm intended to be restoring and everything like that. So I want to continue down the support line, make my army better. So I can do things like plus two experience per turn, um, True Sight, Vigor, which is, you know, just gives me straight up 10 hit points, uh, which will eventually lead to some of these others like uh, Defensive Training. All army units will get Defense and Resistance. Inspiring Leader, which will reduce... Um, upkeep things like that so um so let me think support actually doesn't seem like it's going to get me as much experience leaders fine magecraft lightning evoker deals damage to target hex our target enemy unit and two others within three hexes um let's see sundered resistance so that might be cool. Channel power, uh, so you can basically charge up and then hit them really hard for the next turn. Um, or we can give the attunements uh, star blades. And that's when a spell is cast. Not this is a spell, it's any time I cast a spell. Uh, this unit's base attack randomly gains one, one, or one for three turns. So, so if you're constantly casting spells, that could be useful. So. Lightning weapons. Don't really need that. Because I don't really plan on doing a lot of stabbing. So, Alright, you know what? We're going to go with uh, Experience Leader. I do, I do guess I want to improve my army a bit. Combat casting. Yep, that would be useful. Alright, so we'll do Experience Leader. Confirm that. Um, let's check our magic... So you can check your equipment here and equip as needed. Uh, so as we find things, you'll you'll see that, that that will start to fill up. So so we're all good there. So let's go ahead and end our turn. So day three is done. Hunters from beyond encounter quests. Uh, so for a brief while, your people have found respite in this Valley of Wonders, but now panic shouts start to echo in the streets of Crystallius. Doom is upon us, monsters from the beyond. Your scouts arrive shortly after the uproar. Creatures from the Astral Sea have been sighted near the city. The fear of the arcane toadies quickly leads to doubt. Was Bogart Quill right? Have your magic powers attracted the creatures from afar? To protect your people and restore their faith in your role, you must seek out the Astral Sea monsters near Crystallios. So I'll get uh, some knowledge and a mystery bonus as well. So, so I'll have to accept the quest there. And these are the monsters we've got to kill. An Astral Siphoner. So this has got Astral Pull, so... Um, you can basically pull my unit right next to them, so I can't hide from him. Um, and then they do a single strike melee, but it does... Ooh, 13 lightning, fire, or frost at random. And drains enchantments. So... And 30% chance of being stunned. And when it dies, friendly units heal 15 temporary hit points. Wow. That's kind of rough. Alright, what do we got here? healed a little do I want to jump in now that is a question yeah let's do it all right so encountering the hunters from beyond as you approach the creatures from the astral tree their horrific nature becomes fully revealed haunting eyes gaze from disturbingly flowing limbs an eerie quiet surrounds the monsters while the air around them crackles with magically charged strokes it is clear that the astral siphoner is striking fear in the hearts of your soldiers what do you do fearsome or not they must die uh in the upcoming battle discourage attack attackers is active so morale is important if you have high morale you get a better critical critical hit chance low morale increases fumble chance 
very low morale can lead you to rout as well. So so having minus 10 morale could hurt. I can set a bounty. I'll spend gold and I'll have encouraged attackers. Um, so that might not be a good idea. Or might not be a bad idea. Remind them of their grandeur and bravery of their forefathers. Uh, let's see. Encourage attackers at the cost of my Imperium. Or channel your magic prowess to force a creature back into the sea. Attempt to banish. Four strength. Astral affinity check. 70% chance of success. So flee through the astral breach and the army will be removed. Or failure. Evade your arcane grip and attacks. And for six turns, we'll lose one astral affinity and discourage attackers will be on. So do I take that chance? I am a magic caster. I'm going to try that. 70% chance. Deciding fate. Success! All right. So they fled. The breach of the mana node hums like an arcane echo as the raw magic of the astral sea returns to resonate with its astral flows. The astral invaders have... A lot of astral there, right? The astral invaders have been repelled, leaving a haunting impression of the dangers lurking beyond Athla. Yet you can't shake off the feeling of having glimpsed something grand, a window opening up between worlds. Inspired by the moment, you feel empowered and capable of conjuring an object from the astral sea for yourself. So I receive 113 knowledge. Magic shield changes from two turns to one turn. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, summon a magic art magical artifact. Uh, let's see. You'll gain a hero item, robe of resistance. Draw on a large amount of mana or conjure a magical companion. I can get a gremlin unit. Rover resistance is... That's eh, not bad. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do that instead. Just so we can get ourselves some equipment here. Alright. So, now we just click here and our robe of resistance will be put on. Unfortunately, it doesn't show on your, your character, but uh, that extra resistance and status resistance is going to be useful for sure. So, um, Let's see... Does it show your status resistance here? Magic glass. Oh, probably here. Hero, land movement, ruler. Nope. Okay. Well, worry about that later. So we've also got that node there. So if we go and claim that with our city, we'll be good to go. Uh, let's go ahead and work our way down this way, though. Start clearing out our local areas. Uh, we found a brigand camp, so we should probably attack them. Uh, so if you, one of the neat things about this one is it, uh, if you hover over it, oh, I should, yeah, there we go. It'll give you a little description. So in this case, it's a brigand camp, uh, but it'll show you it's a bronze infestation spawner. So it'll spawn, uh, bandits, uh, to attack you. And, uh, right now they're in deep sleep. So in nine plus turns, uh, they will actually turn on and start producing units unless you crush the camp. So, all right. You're just doing some scouting, so let's go ahead and take a look over this way. Alright, so we just picked up a thing of mana. We got, what, uh, Fury. Shoots bow. Always dangerous with uh, the range units. Mole Spellcasters. Interesting. So they, they have the benefit of their base race there, so... And then this is a pack hunter, so not really good if you don't have a pack. So, all right, so that's all done. Now, this is the Empire Development Tree. So based on those choices we made, we have an affinity. So right now it's six astral. So we're going to pretty much be uh, be earning affinity towards uh, astral type things, as well as general here. So as you can see, it has an income per turn. Um, so right now we have 12 of the general, and we have six of the astral. So this will allow you to earn upgrades in the points. So as you can see, this one gives me 20 combat casting points and uh, world map casting points as well. So it cost me 50, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then as you go up this tree, it'll cost a little bit more and it'll tell you how many turns before you unlock it. So in two more turns, I'll be able to get an additional reduction on cost for new uh, research. So that's very useful. And you can see all the way down here where uh, new magic origin units get plus three ranks. So you kind of work your way down the tree and you can have multiple trees going. Uh, but some uh, higher tier books, which we'll get to, tomes, which you can see actually over here, uh, will require that you have access to uh, something higher. So, so you can see the different tomes. I can do evocation, general research, and mystic. 
um, and those will give us bonuses for having them, things like that. So, um, but yeah, so that's what we got there. So we've done that. So let's go ahead and end our turn. Ever since you've arrived in the Valley of Wonders, lucid vi visions have appeared in your mind's eye. Now a purposeful-looking elven lady comes into focus. Salutations, rapido fate weaver. I am Sundren of House Inioc. My people have guarded this valley through the ages. For better or worse, its fate is connected to our own. We've been watching you for some time. Other powerful Gadir have noticed your arrival, too. Your essence emanates conflict, but also great potential. Listen to what I have to say, and you and uh, your arcane toadies may avoid meeting your end here. So, the Lost Tower. Explore the structure. The pyromancer Yaka has broken free and returned to Athla. His gaze is set upon the Valley of Wonders. Excuse me. He is building up his infernal strength and will not tolerate competition, especially from a fledgling mage like you. You must embrace the spark of magic that is awoken inside you. Seek out the powers of the nearby Tower of Destiny before Yaka does. If you don't prepare, Yaka will bury your, burn your settlement to the ground. So, we gotta explore a Tower of Destiny and use its power to ward off Yaka. Uh, doing so will get us mana as well as a mystery bonus. And then we could choose to fight them instead. Um, and it shows you it's a hard story path um, versus this one, which is the easy one. So we'll do the easy one because in the interest of, you know, just kind of showing it off, right? So, um, and, you know, fellow mages, right? All right. So at this point, this is clear. So I think we'll go ahead and work our way up. We'll crush that, and then we'll go up and crush the brigands. Gives my people a little more time to heal. Over here, let's see. What do we want to do? Well, let's continue exploring over this way. We can pick up more mana. So we'll set that up for next turn. Research complete. So we now have magic shield, uh, so we can get bolstered defense. Okay. It says two bolstered resistance and it shows one so maybe it is two just the way it's showing so so now we get to select a new research so the lesser storm spirit is definitely what i want here um so that'll be useful that'll let me summon uh, one of the storm spirits that i have in my army already so all right so now we can expand again so let me zoom out a little here do we want I could do a research node here which may not be a bad idea I like research so we'll do that get us a little more knowledge per turn because right now we're getting 65 knowledge per turn um, but you know getting a boost would be nice and then we'll get the mana as well as for taking that node so um, unit enchantment so upkeep is two per turn we're making 20 um, but it only affects one melee unit Let's see, what are you? Spirit Hawks. Uh, they're very weak to shock. So yeah, let, let's do this for fun. Boop, 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 boom. So it'll take us a turn because it takes all our casting points, but there we go. We've used up the rest, so now we can cast this. And so it can affect a fighter unit or a polearm unit. So let's do the polearm unit. Oh, um. Oh, actually, it does all of them, it looks like. All right, very cool. So now, if we check our unit here, we have lightning blades. Okay, so that affects all of them. So. Um, so we'll be able to electrify. We're doing uh, 10 and 4 now instead of 12. So we've, we've, we've got ourselves uh, an improvement for sure. Oh, and uh, so oop. you can see they've got one. So they're reducing 10% uh, damage on physical. And then because of their lightning, they're actually uh, taking 27% extra damage from the lightning. So very cool. All right, so now we go crush them. Just gonna hit auto combat because again, nothing exciting there. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do this one. And we're gonna do the auto combat, but then we'll watch this one just so you can see what it looks like. As you can see, a little more defensive because it is a bandit camp. So that'll 
that'll play in the, the defensive uh, or in the in the tacticals for sure. And sometimes terrain will have different levels, so you can see regeneration. And because we're all ranged, we're just gonna get together and buff ourselves. They're electrified now. And then a couple shots. It's interesting that they're splitting targets, but maybe it's because of accuracy. Since these guys are not locked in uh, melee, they may be easier to hit. And grazed for two. Nice. And as you can see, they have number of people, right? Six is the base. Um, so uh, that base uh, is part of the damage. And I believe as you take casualties and you lose figures, uh, you do less in, uh, you're less effective with your attacks. Um, that's why that uh, horde ability allows you to have more per hex. So I think you go up to eight figures instead of six. Uh, and you get a 20% damage boost, so you'll be more effective for longer as a result. So, so as you can see, nice and easy. And our rewards. So uh, another change from Age of Wonders 3, for those of you who played before, is that, as you can see, the rewards aren't able to be sold, so you just get them, which I kind of like. Uh, removing that means that I want to take the items because uh, I don't have a choice, so I can use them instead of uh, having a bunch of naked heroes and a bunch of gold instead. So... Uh, so yeah, definitely. Demoralizing Mask. Melee attacks have a 60% chance of gaining despair. Nice. So we'll take that. We'll go ahead and put that mask on. And occasionally you won't be able to equip certain things. So uh, it'll tell you why. Uh, for instance, if you're mounted, you can't wear certain pieces of heavy armor. Or you can't be mounted and wield a two-handed staff. Things like that. So they've got some limitations built into it. But, but now we've eliminated them. Um, depending on your choices... Defeating an infestation spawner can give you some additional benefits. Uh, let me see if I click here. Uh, just as an example, under the chaos, defeating an infestation grants you a unit based on the infestation defeated. Uh, the, let's see, where is it? No, not mechanical, what one? What other one did I see? Uh, order affinity, yeah. Uh, destroying them against uh, 300 relations to all free cities for 10 turns, things like that, so kind of neat how that goes so all right let's go ahead and pick that up a bunch of mountains near us do that so we produced a storehouse so now we're getting a bonus to our food uh, courtesy of the storehouse so let's take a look what do we need next so vendor will give us uh, gold income granary will get us more food income Mana, draft, and production income. That may not be bad. Straight mana income. Let's see. So it gives you the uh, the indicators of what it does there too. So um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll do the evocators abode. Let's hurry the production because it's only 26 gold. And then we can go here. So your, uh, your leftover production will roll into the next thing, so you can actually get some, some stuff going. And you can only do hurry production once per turn. But as you can see, as we get things, we'll unlock new things. So Blacksmith here uh, gives you more draft income. Uh, Stone Conjurer is uh, going to allow you to do mana and production and unlocks the Masonic Hall, things like that. So, so we're getting close to doing some cool stuff. And you can see what you've got uh, improved down here right now. So... All right, new empire development skill. So I could do this one. I think I do want that. All right. Um, so I'm not sure how I should be handling my Imperium right now. That's something we'll have to figure out. But that's what you utilize to settle new cities. So instead of building settler units and things like that, to, you just get a hero to the right spot and you should be able to establish a city, I believe. So build the defensive unit. All right. And as you can see, if you're not generating units, you'll generate food. Uh, you'll convert your draft into that. So that could be very useful as well. And then just keep in mind your units do have an upkeep as well. So um, 
The arcane guard have a mana upkeep. Interesting. Oh, is it the oh the mana upkeep is because of the spell I cast. Aha! So there's three units right now with the unit enchantment. Interesting. Okay. So let's go ahead and get ourselves uh, an arcanist, 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 and we're still building that. I could hurry production. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll go ahead and build. Uh, I really want a library next, so let's do that. Okay. So, okay, so there are a lot of buffs you can do for your units, but that could uh, become pretty costly. All right, meeting the Separatists. You meet Bogart Quill, who parted ways with the Arcane Toadies loyal to him as your tribe entered the Valley of Wonders. So we speak again, Rapido Fate Weaver, Bogart Quill says with a stern voice. Remember, we of Weirdgate seek no quarrel. It was magic that caused the loss of our homeland, magic that killed the elder of our tribe. When you took up the elder's tome, you asked for doom. We kept our distance. Evading all magic will keep us safe. Uh, so we can give him one of our Whispering Stones. So this is kind of how you do your, your influencing of others' uh, places. Uh, so you are limited on the number of Whispering Stones you're allowed. Um, this allows you to start negotiations and improve your allegiance. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and do that. So, uh, so we'll give them a whispering stone, and as you can see now, we're going to start gaining allegiance uh, to the tune of looks like three per turn, and uh, in four turns we'll reach a pact of cooperation, uh, which will allow trading and uh, allow us to probably walk into their territory. Um, Neutral. Oh, that allows us to get to neutral. Or we are at neutral. Okay. So it allows us to get to Pact of Cooperation. So we can spend our Imperium to gain a boost. Um, yeah, let's do that. And then we can withdraw or declare war. So so we're going to do this the, uh, the friendly way right now. We're neutral. So. All right. So you, sir, are just going to guard for now. And uh, you, sir, need to go scouting. I think the best way to go is this way. Is this a uh, Archon Blood? Oh, okay, it's not. It's just red. But all right. So I think that is everything there. What do we got here? So we've got a couple scouts, a pursuer, and a dark warrior. So melee and the archer. And they're okay. They're holding on to a gold vein. So. Hmm. So do I crush them or? Well, at this point, why don't we go down here so we can see what's on there? All right, that's a little more dangerous. Several copper golems and a stone spirit. What are you sitting on? Okay, farms. All right, yeah, let's go ahead and attack these guys. Ooh, occupational hazard. As your troops approach the band of mercenary guards, they raise the white flag. We were hired by a rich merchant to look after the gold vein. The leader of the gang, a dark warrior, explains. We expected to protect it from the roaming scoundrels, not against a full-fledged assault. Please accept our surrender and let us go. So this was uh, from the old one. You can attack, which will let you gain experience, but you'll get a little more evil. You can let them leave in peace. Um, or you could uh, try and... It looks like hire a dark warrior unit. Okay. So, charge strike. Oh, they're corpse eating. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Because, uh, yeah, they're cannibalistic fey. Um, that's cool. No, nah, I, I think we'll just uh, let them leave in peace. The alignment will be helpful. All right. So, that clears that one without a fight. So, we'll come down here and we'll do this one next here. So. Essentially, my power was uh, far greater than theirs, and so uh, they were willing to leave it be without fighting. So, all right, select new research. Um, do that. Scroll of attunement, wayfinder enchantment. So, so scout units will get very fast movement, which I believe is forty-eight. Yeah, forty-eight movement. It's not bad, but um, yeah, let's do the scroll of attunement instead. Because uh, right now they're at fast movement, I believe. It doesn't. Uh, so let me right click. 
So movement is considered floating. It doesn't say how fast. Okay. Pass through. Oh, there it is. Floating. No. Okay. Ethereal? Nope. Scout unit. Nope. Okay. Well, uh, important to note in this one as well, uh, despite being able to fly, you don't know how to fly over water until you accept that empire ability. So just to give you an idea, it's right here. Uh, cost me 50 Imperium, but then I'll be able to fly or float over water. So kind of weird, but uh, maybe it's just teaching you how to survive as you do that. But anyways, uh, so yeah, diplomatic focus, gaining the Whispering Stone. So this you can get through, uh, I think through starting. So depending on, on how things go. So, so that's kind of an interesting thing. So, all right. So we got summon lesser spirit. So it'll tell you when you get a new spell to cast. Um, so that you know to to go and check for it so that's kind of neat uh so we need a pact of vassalage and clear towers of destiny or the tower of destiny all right we'll kind of go through that nothing's changed and we'll go ahead and call the video here so thank you all for joining me on this journey we're going to continue this uh gameplay we're going to continue to to play through and and finish this little story mission and then you know uh leave comments on what you'd like to see if you'd like to see more tactical combat if you'd like to see more, um, you know, uh, different races, different gameplay, uh, different styles, we'll definitely be doing multiplayer via our stream as well. So you can see that in action. I know that's a little uh, less common uh, on, on YouTube. So feel free to, to drop some comments. And as always, uh, we appreciate you guys coming in. So please drop a like, comment, subscribe, and we will catch you guys next time.